Reading and Writing from the Inside Out, a Cognitive Components Model. A Model of Word Reading and Writing. Every model of word reading must include at least four skills. This is true for every language and script. These four skills all work together. The first is phonology, or the system of speech sounds in a language. The second is meaning. This is how meaning is represented in language. The third is orthographic representation. This is the system by which we use a system of visual symbols to recognize and to write words. The final skill is automatization. This is the process by which we get faster and more automatic at recognizing words. In addition, we also need visual motor skills in order to be able to write or to type. This is important for dictation and spelling only. Phonology, meaning, and orthographic representation are interrelated. In every language and script, these skills are interrelated. Think about how words are presented in a dictionary. For example, let's look at the word book. 1. Written or printed work consisting of pages glued or sewn together along one side and bound in covers. 2. A bound set of blank sheets for writing in. There are three important types of information given in this dictionary entry. First is how it sounds when you say it. Book. This is an example of phonology. Second is what it means. A written or printed work consisting of pages glued or sewn together or a bound set of blank sheets. This is an example of meaning. Third is what the word looks like. Book is spelled with B-O-O-K, which are letters of the English alphabet. This is an example of orthographic representation. Your mind is like a dictionary where the phonology, meaning, and orthographic representation of different words are represented. When you read a word, you try to recognize it from how it is written. You also think about how it sounds and what it means. In other languages, the word for book can mean the same thing, but the way it is said and how it is written is different. Figure 1 shows the word book in seven languages. Now, let's look at the different components of the model of word reading and writing. Phonology. You can also think of phonology, meaning, and orthographic representation as going from the bottom to the top. At the beginning is phonology. We are all capable of recognizing phonological units even if we do not understand the language. That is, if you hear unfamiliar languages being spoken, you can tell just based on sounds that they are different. For example, even if you do not know the languages, you will notice certain sound patterns in Russian that are different from the sound patterns in Portuguese. You can do this without understanding either language because human beings have some basic skills in phonological processing. Phonological processing is all about speech sounds. As children become better at phonological processing, they develop the ability to take apart spoken words into smaller sounds. The smallest sounds that make the difference between one word and another are called phonemes. Some phonemes are consonant sounds like p, d, b, and t. Some are vowel sounds such as the a sound of a in bat and the a sound of a in bake. A syllable is a unit of a word containing a vowel sound. For example, there are two syllables in butter and three in cucumber. 
When consonants and vowels are put together to form syllables, they make different patterns such as consonant vowel or CV like ba, consonant vowel consonant or CVC like dad, or even harder ones like CCVCC like drift. Figure 2 shows different examples of English words broken down into phonemes and syllables. However, as we start to connect meaning to sounds, we also hear the sounds more clearly and distinctively. We map meaning onto sound. Meaning is at the second level above phonology. Meaning in this case broadly refers to morphology. In connection to reading. Morphemes are the smallest units of meaning in a language. For example, pet represents a morpheme or unit of meaning that represents a tamed animal that a human takes care of at home. The word pets contains two morphemes, pet the animal and s marking it as plural. Morphemes can indicate a lot of information about words. They can answer these questions. What is it? Is it plural or singular? Is the word masculine or feminine? What is the grammatical tense, past, present? Morphemes can also be prefixes or suffixes or help to form compound words. In English, a morpheme can be in different forms. Figure 3 shows some different forms of morphemes in English. When we learn to read, we connect words we know to visual patterns in our script. All words we can read have a certain look that we get used to and recognize over time. Orthographic representation is at the third level in our model. Phonology is at the base. Meaning connects onto sound when we learn a language, and orthographic representation is at the top. As seen in Figure 1, languages around the world are represented using different scripts. Some are written in letters, like English. Some are written using more complex visual symbols, like Hindi. In Module 2, we will see how orthographic representations vary in different scripts or writing systems. Perhaps the best example of how orthographic representation works is by comparing homophones. Homophones are words that sound the same but have different meanings. These differences are reflected in their different spellings. For example, two, two, and two all sound the same, but are written differently. The same is true for by, by, and by. Along with the sound, phonology, meaning, and orthographic representation of words, we also need to talk about automatization, or speed. In order to read quickly or fluently, we have to reach a certain level of speed. Beginning readers are often very slow to recognize patterns on a page. They have to recognize all of the visual information on the page, put it together, and recognize the word. Thus, b, i, t spells bit. Combining these three letter sounds can be slow and difficult. There are many processes that are very slow and difficult at first and that with practice we get faster at. Learning to button a button or to tie our shoelaces are examples. The steps are slow at first and then become almost automatic later. We talk about this as speed, automatization, or fluency in reading. A final aspect of learning to write a word is visual motor skill. Children learn to write by making marks on a page, typically with a pen and paper. Eye-hand coordination is needed in order to make sure that the marks 
look like a real word. This is a special step that is involved in spelling, but not in reading. To summarize, we have highlighted the central features of learning to read and to write words. The first is phonology. Phonology involves recognition of speech sounds. Speech sounds occur at different levels, such as phonemes, syllables, or others. The second is the recognition of the meaningful units of words. Words are made up of morphemes. Morphemes can indicate a lot of information about words, including indicating if words are singular or plural, if they are masculine or feminine. Morphemes can also be prefixes or suffixes or help to form compound words. The third is orthographic representation. This is the visual pattern of the word involving a particular script. In different languages, this will involve letters, syllable units, radicals or strokes, diacritics, or other marks and other features. Putting sound, meaning, and visual information together quickly is important. To do this, we need to practice in order to attain fluency or automatization. Finally, in order to learn to spell, we must learn eye-hand coordination. This helps us to write words in the script that we have learned.